Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Blabbing Translators. My name is Dmitry Kornyukov. I'm your host. Joining me tonight, my amazing co-host, Yelena Tereshenkova. Hi, Elena. Hello, everyone. So Blabbing Translators is the first live talk show about translation and translators, uh, where we normally interview interesting people of our industry and talk about a variety of different topics from video game localization, to working with self-published offers, or finding clients and marketing your services. But tonight, uh, we have a, a very special episode. Uh, we don't have a guest today, and this is basically the last episode of season one. Uh, we've been doing this for how many episodes, Helena? 18, right? Yeah, 18. This is the 19th episode since February. Yeah. So yeah, we, we launched this... Uh, talk show um, in the beginning of February. And so far we have 19 episodes and we kind of decided to give ourselves a little break because I think we deserve it. Oh, so, Yelena, uh, are you excited about the upcoming vacation from the Blabbing Translators? About the break? Uh, on the one hand, I am a little. Uh, on the other hand, I'm sure I'm going to miss it because it's it's been for, for the past, how many? Three, three? Yeah, four months, almost four months, a little over four months. Um, it's been really a highlight of my week because uh, as, as a freelance translator, I don't get to see a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of, a lot of other uh, translators. Of course, I see my friends and family, but they're not all <laughs> translators. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's been very interesting and it, it's been a great experience. I think it would be a good idea just to go a little bit, a little bit back to the beginning. And uh, could you tell a few words about how you came up with this idea? So yeah, uh, oh yeah, we have a, a new a new member join, join us. Oh, really? Oh, really? Hi, hi. hi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I originally came up with a an idea when uh, our colleague uh, Tatiana Struk, uh, Yelena, you, you know her, uh, mm -hmm. invited me and Yelena to hold some sort of a webinar presentation to for uh, uh, Russian translators about marketing and business side of translation, blogs, etc. And while we were looking for a platform to host our potential webinar, uh, we come across a, a few problems uh, with I think it was go to webinar. I remember when we, mm, I remember when yeah. we, the, yeah. when the three of us we are trying to connect to this platform, nothing really works. So uh, I started to do a Google search of potential platforms where we can kind of conduct a, a webinar, and I came across Blab, uh, this platform that we are using for this talk show, and it was kind of like the love at first. Mm -hmm. A site, so uh, I fell in love with this platform uh, with the simplicity and uh, the host of features that it offers to me as a person who hosts the show and to our audience who can easily interact with us, uh, use a chat uh, window or uh, even call us if they are not very shy. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it's kind of all, all fall into the same place, and I decided to well, why not host a kind of like a live talk show. Uh, I had no experience in hosting anything. Uh, uh, and I, I, I have no experience of uh, being on camera or, or anything like that, or recording my own voice, <laughs> or even listening to my, my, my own voice recorded, which I, I found very weird and, and strange when I, when I listened to it. <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, I just like experimenting and trying uh, new interesting things. So I figured that uh, this kind of little fun uh, side project could bring a lot of value to other people of my tr uh, my, my profession. So uh, I came up with a format where I would have a co-host and together we could invite uh, a third person uh, as a guest who would talk about all kinds of different topics. And I started looking for people and uh, Yelena was one of the uh, first person I contacted. I actually uh, I didn't tell you this, Lena, but I contacted a few mm -hmm. people and, mm -hmm. at, at the same time, and you were we only, the only one who agreed to be a co cool Oh, really? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. Because I, I figured, yeah, thank, I figured, you, thank you for. for... Uh, I figured that uh, uh, I cannot do this on my own. I, I really need someone who, who who would be able to help me because I already have a, the open mic, 
plus my own translation business, which is the only the, the only uh, source of income for me. So adding the third thing, like a, a weekly talk show, and I always wanted to be a weekly talk show where you have you have to show up consistently every single week. So it's a lot of work. So I figured uh, having a co-host who would equally share responsibilities with me could be a great idea. So I invited you and you agreed. And the rest is history, like they said. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote a little bit about it um, in uh, one of my blog posts on my blog on at wordsboutique.com. Uh, but um, I actually had an idea for a podcast for about for several months by the time you contacted me about it. And uh, it, it was funny because I've been listening to podcasts. I, first of all, I've been listening to the Sweetest podcast, obviously and then to several other podcasts and i thought that it was a lot of fun and uh, but there was uh, i didn't find any podcast translation podcasts where people were just uh, discussing different topics talking about things and it was uh, all light and conversational and uh, probably they didn't even have any particular subject to talk about but i've been listening to a lot of such podcasts um, from other entrepreneurs and it, I found that format very interesting. And I've been thinking about something like that, but of course I was afraid to launch it on my own. Um, first of all, I was afraid more, I was more afraid of the technical side. Uh, I mean, uh, I haven't thought about uh, a video podcast. I definitely thought about an audio podcast. Um, but I thought that it was also, also difficult and uh, it would take so much time just to, understand how it all works how do i upload it to itunes how do i upload it to soundcloud and i i was i was just too yeah shy about it and probably if you hadn't contacted me uh, and hadn't reached out to me about the blaming translators project i would still be dreamy about a podcast <laughs> till now but that was um, yeah some a kind of a virtual kick that I needed. Yeah, and now you. So I'm yeah. really, I'm really, yeah, I'm really glad that uh, you offered me to take part in something yeah. like that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and I, I couldn't, I could not think of a, any better uh, a partner in crime who. Thank can, you. <laughs> uh, actually, no, actually, actually we we divide responsibilities between Glenn yeah. and me. So, uh, and from the, the the very beginning, we decided that we. We, we want to share responsibilities and we want to divide it into two parts. So uh, I'm more of a tech guy because you, like Elena says, she's, she's, she's not very uh, passionate Excellent. about technology. Yeah, <laughs> Let's put it this way. Yeah. So, and I, and I like uh, breaking things and making things and, and figuring out how stuff works. So uh, most of the technical stuff uh, here on the show, it's my responsibility. I upload videos to YouTube. I upload audio to SoundCloud, iTunes. I also built a website at blabintranslators.com. <laughs> Come over to this website and subscribe to our mailing list if you haven't done so yet, <laughs> uh, in case you're watching this in recording. But yeah, and Yelena is hand handling uh, all the invitations. And I never really, uh, we never really talked about how 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 it goes. Uh, how do people react to your invitations? Um, that's one of my favorite parts, actually, apart from talking with you guys here every Wednesday, because um, I think I had two people saying that they would they would actually like to take part, but they are afraid that they don't have uh, much to share or that they're ca camera shy. But they promise to think about it, and uh, after watching a couple some episodes, they will they will probably join us at some later stage. But actually, everyone whom I contacted were very glad. Uh, even from the very beginning, even when we, I see Sophie is here, uh, and Rafa, I, I'm, I think Rafa has already seen a couple of episodes uh, when I contacted her, right, Rafa? Mm -hmm. But uh, Sophia was, uh, for sure, Kazoo and Sophia were the ones who agreed, who readily and happily agreed to take part in something they didn't know anything about, apart from what I told them, and they haven't seen. Uh, 
uh, how it will all work and how it will all go. So yeah, it's it's that those emotions that uh, people uh, show when even when I contact them, it's something really precious and I enjoy it very much. And I also like uh, picking the subjects of our talk because when I contact our guests, I usually uh, offer them a couple of things that we could talk about. I would like probably, I don't know, we we should probably uh, make a survey or something like that and ask our viewers if they'd like to see uh, a new format of those talk shows without a particular subject, if that's something that would be interesting for them as well. Uh, it's something I definitely would like to try out. Uh, but for now, I'm actually uh, offering a couple of things we could talk about to people whom I contact. And uh, the funny thing is that uh, in order to do that, I read uh, a blog if they have a blog or just read something about them or it might be something that uh, we have been discussing on social media and things like that. Uh, the funny thing is that um, uh, actually every time, every single time I offered a subject, they First, they agreed and said, wow, yeah, that's that's actually what I want to talk about. But then they um, looked at it at a completely different angle from what I thought. And it, it was much better than I, than I initially imagined or thought or planned. And so it's, it's that collaboration part uh, that is really um, comes through in this project, in the, the whole blaming translators thing. Because I think collaboration is, uh, yeah, the most important thing. Collaboration between uh, you, Dmitry, and me, and collaboration between us and our guests. I think it's very important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we also have a, a sec have secret, a uh, secret uh, power. power. Uh, we use a Trello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a very powerful tool that uh, helps us uh, uh, coordinate all the moving parts of our show. It does. Um, I even have I even create a, a list of all the things I have to, to I have to do uh, for every single episode, and I think I, I have a I have a list for uh, for the things that that I need to do when I am inviting someone, or the things that that I need to do when uh, the blab is finished, because I have to upload it, I have to post it on social media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And each list has at least I think twenty five items on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm just going over them and just checking them out on, on Trello. It's very satisfying to know, and it's very helpful actually, and it helps you streamline the, the whole process. So if everyone is uh, uh, looking into starting a side project, uh, I, I, I highly recommend you using checklists because it's the most effective. I, I don't know for me personally, it's the most effective. Uh, uh, I don't know hack or motivational tool, yeah, motivational it's, the, tool. it's really motivating when you when you can check things off the list yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's something I, i've been i've been planning to try out for my uh yeah blabbing translators workflow as well yeah so we have a couple uh other people join us hello enrico hello katarina hello sandrine <laughs> Oh, by the way, guys, if you have any questions about Blavy translators that uh, you've wanted to ask us, go ahead. You can call in. Yeah. <laughs> the only time, yeah, the only time we managed to we managed to uh, persuade people call in was during your yeah birthday present blab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, I, I really enjoyed it uh, when people. Uh, yeah, that was fun. But. Uh, or um, you can just type in you can type in your questions in the chat box. Yeah, the the old the old fashioned way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, I guess this is one of the biggest challenges that uh, we somehow need to overcome in the future, getting people to be more uh, to, to interact more and to call in. <laughs> well, I I wouldn't say that uh, people don't interact. Uh, people do interact, but I think a lot of them are camera shy. And uh, as we know, a lot of translators are introverts or think that they are introverts. And uh, for me personally, I think, I don't know if anyone can relate to that, but uh, the more I think about it, uh, the more I come to the conclusion that for me, this introvert label is just a safe place to hide. 
so uh, I, I actually thought, I had thought that I'm an introvert. And uh, since I work from home and I enjoy working alone and uh, I don't suffer from being lonely because I can communicate with people whom I want to communicate with and don't have to talk to some nasty colleagues in some office <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> in the so I thought... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, it might not be the basement, but some crowded office where I have to go every day to be there at eight o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, uh, I thought that I'm an introvert, but I enjoy doing something like this so much. And uh, although I am ner a little bit nervous before every episode, um, the fun and the enjoyment I get from it is much more than that nervousness or the, the, that, that's just that just my fear is not enough to hold me back. It's not big enough to hold me back. So I think that's probably I might be I might be an introvert, but some kind of an extro extroverted introvert <laughs> who also enjoys yeah, who also enjoys uh, talking to other people. Well, but um Actually, I do. I do need uh, some time to recharge after that. So probably. Yeah, it uh, it, it kind of seems like it's 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 a very simple task, right? You, you just have to show up on camera and talk yeah. talk for an hour or ask questions. Now, case because uh, most of the episodes we don't do much talking, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Most of the time, uh, <laughs> it's our guests who have to talk a lot because we prepare questions for them. We have a topic, and we are interested in what our guests have to say about a certain subject area. But uh, even that is is quite uh, uh, it's quite it's quite difficult to adjust to your normal life. If I can say that after you uh, you completed the episode. And for for me personally, I, I I also nervous. I also nervous every single time. It's, I think it's quite natural because well, you have to show up on camera. You have to uh, look professional. You you have to ask questions. You have to be prepared for a conversation. And uh, it's always nerve wracking, I guess. Even though we we are trying to keep things light here, we, uh, and we we don't have much of thousands of people watching us, it's still it's still nerve wracking nerve wracking to be here uh, every single week. So uh, basically, my my Wednesdays uh, they they don't exist if we if we uh, consider them as a, as a work day because. Uh, I cannot focus on work before before the blab because uh, I'm 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 really mad myself. I'm I, I, I'm getting too either excited or too stressed out because uh, <laughs> the, the blab is soon and uh, I cannot focus on on translation and uh, stuff like that. And after the show, I also have to do a lot of technical tasks such as up uploading videos or uh, updating my website, our website, and adding videos to our website. So yeah, my, my my Wednesdays they basically are dedicated to this uh, side project. <laughs> I never thought about it, but for you it's twelve p.m. So yeah, if if that yeah. was the case for me, for me it's seven p.m. in the evening, so I can do work. I don't then, know till yeah. three p till three p.m. or four p.m. Then I have a couple of hours to get nervous. <laughs> that I had, that we have the show. That I get that rush. I remember the first time. It, I think it was, it was, yeah, probably the one of the, one of the most emotional moments in in this year for me, because <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, it was the first time, and I was also alone with yeah, you're all by you, you got yeah, you got you got a sore throat, a sore throat. So and it was that that. Uh, that those feelings that I had after the blab, it will. I think I got so much adrenaline in my blood <laughs> that <laughs> I I could run. I don't know a ten k after that, and even and not even notice that. And it was yeah, that was a lot of fun. And it's it's like this basically every time. But actually, after our blabs, I go for a walk with my dog. So yeah, <laughs> I, I I get to get get away to. Uh, to get rid of those chemicals in my blood, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I think well, let's talk about uh, what's working and what 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 doesn't yeah. work. 
Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think is working right now? Um, I'm sure that uh, the process of inviting the guests working pretty well, uh, apart from uh, one one the the issue the technical issue we had uh, with our last guest that mm -hmm. unfortunately couldn't join us today. So that's why we we decided to cut it and uh, make this final Q and A session today instead of making it next week. Um, it was it was working out pretty well. I uh, had some doubts about contacting people so much uh, in advance, mm -hmm. uh, but then it paid off uh, because if someone life is life and things might change, and uh, it's good to have some uh, spare time to find other guests, uh, another guest if someone can't make it. Another thing that's uh, working really well is uh, yeah all the technical things. I think they work amazing. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, uh, we've got a nice website, everything's uploaded and everything's working. I sometimes listen to our podcasts on iTunes, which is a very strange experience hearing myself asking questions. I get I get a little bit frightened every time. Oh, why am I talking there? Because I'm listening to podcasts uh, basically every day when I'm working my dog in the morning. And uh, yeah, it's it's okay to hear other people like Mitri or Katerina or Sofia or Rafa or Steve Vitek or someone else. But but yeah, every time I hear myself asking questions, it's, it's a little bit weird. Um, what do you think? What's working for you? Well, uh, I really like that uh, a lot of people are actually watching our show. Uh, I, yeah. I, I wish I wish that there were more, but uh, I guess it's uh, just uh, uh, the question of time and we just have to, think, just have to be patient. We, uh, in terms of uh, growing our audience, uh, I'm, I'm happy where we are right now. We 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 have uh, 11 people watching us right now in the middle of the yeah. day or maybe at the end of the day. I think that's awesome. So thank you guys for tuning in and watching this live. Yeah. But we also have uh, uh, hundreds of people watching this in the record. So uh, that, that, mm. I think that's also great that uh, we we upload everything for people's convenience. Yeah. Uh, so because not uh, I understand that for example. Right, right now it's the middle of the day in Canada, so uh, normally people would have to focus on work, and they wouldn't—they they don't have much time to uh, watch a live talk show, right? So uh, <laughs> that's why that's why from day one we decided that we're going to record everything and put it in as many places as possible. So we have YouTube, we have SoundCloud, we have iTunes, uh, and the majority of uh, views uh, we get are uh, from those those platforms especially i think youtube is uh, the most uh, popular platform mm. uh, among uh, uh, our audience and soundcloud is the second and i don't know about itunes because i don't use itunes i don't have a uh, a smartphone i don't have uh, apple devices do you can't you can't <laughs> you can see the number of uh, viewers on itunes can it get, can't you see it too? I thought you can see it because you upload them. Uh, you see the thing, yeah. the, 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 uh, it works. Uh, I only upload it to SoundCloud. And yeah, I know. It's automatically, <laughs> automatically, it's going to iTunes. So I don't have, I don't even have to log into iTunes and to check out mm -hmm. if it's uploading because it, it works. Uh, because it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I haven't figured out a way how to. Uh, Watch the statistics. Yeah, look, get, look at this, that. Get, get the analytics. But yeah, apart from that, uh, I really like that uh, the topics are very varied from from one episode to another episode. Yeah. I guess uh, it's all thanks to you because you 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 you, you and have, to the guests you and to the guests. Yeah, yeah. But, but you also uh, you invite very interesting people. We have so many interesting people, and what I love in particular, we we had uh, quite a few people who. Are not that visible, like for example, yeah. the, the rock stars of our industry, so to speak, mm -hmm. or the influencers. So we, we also have uh, people who have less online visibility. I, I think it's awesome that uh, they were guests on our show and they had a chance to talk and show um, talk about something and uh, show their faces. And now everyone knows them. And and hopefully, uh, hopefully that this 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 format would. Uh, and help people build more credible online presence and maybe even land new clients. I don't know. Uh, 
even though we, we try to keep things lighthearted, for example, sometimes you can see our cat tools showing up <laughs> on camera, right? But, but still, it's a, it's a product of a, profession, of a professional, uh, the professional approach. So we focus on uh, something that is of interest to other professionals in our industry. And the topics that we talk about here are hopefully they're bringing value to, to people who are watching and listening. So I really like that uh, we are doing this. <laughs> and I, I hope that uh, more people would, would be inspired by our example and maybe start their own shows and uh, maybe even something local. We actually, I don't see uh, one, Alex of our, is not here yeah, today. One, one of our viewers actually was, in, uh, was inspired by our example. And she started a, a local uh, show on Blab in Guatemala. So she now you know, has a, a similar project uh, and where she invites uh, uh, translators from her own country and they, they, they discuss important issues. So I think it's in, in Spanish. I haven't, uh, I haven't got the chance to watch it, but uh, I posted the link on Twitter or somewhere. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I think it's great. I think uh, when uh, people start to uh, use the, this show as a, an example and as a reference and and then they they start doing something similar i think that's great i think that's awesome and uh, I, I i would love to see more more of that in different languages or in different countries yeah that would be great uh i really as a person who like you said is uh, introverted a little bit right <laughs> uh i don't get a lot of chances to meet other translators in person and Sometimes it's uh, consciously, sometimes it's subconsciously, and uh, sometimes uh, I'm just simply afraid that uh, I have nothing to, to say or I have nothing to show for, for myself, right? But uh, this kind of format, uh, it really brings people together and then it makes it much, much easier to communicate and to talk about important issues of our industry. I think I, uh, one of my most favorite episodes was uh, with Steve Litek, uh where we, i think we talked about very controversial topics of translation agencies and yeah. how these large companies affect uh, the development of our industry and uh, how they affect our profession and i wish we, we will have more uh, of such controversial topics discussed in uh, in the future because not I, I haven't seen that many people discussing those topics uh, even uh, if you look uh, at our blogs or the open mic the majority of topics are kind of repetitive, uh, if I if I may say say so. But uh, I hope that we will come up with the, the the way to cover more controversial topics and topics that are uh, haven't been discussed that wide wild uh, that wide in the on the internet, right? Mm. So yeah, that, I got, I my several, hopes for the future. <laughs> I got several things to say regarding what you just said, and I want to say them before I forgot. Before I forgot, forget. The first one, I remember, I was really excited when it turned out that you can upload videos and audio recordings to uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. I think you say it's with a click of a single button. So it's it's Blab is uh, very well integrated, yeah, with all those uh, platforms. Not really, not really, because Blab yeah. is in beta, uh, so they, mm. they 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 constantly changing things, they constantly breaking things, they constantly uh, try new things. And for example, Blab allows me to upload YouTube video to uh, upload the video to YouTube mm -hmm. directly from the platform by clicking mm -hmm. a button. But the problem is, it doesn't work. <laughs> Oh, I see. It okay. works. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, hopefully, hopefully one day you'll be able to do that with, with a click of a button. But I was particularly excited about um, uploading to iTunes yeah, and SoundCloud um, because I think that uh, uh, the podcast format is a great one because we are all very busy nowadays and uh, podcasts allow us to listen to something while we are doing something else. And I think it's very important. Um, and another thing I wanted to say is uh, about uh, the fact that you mentioned that we didn't invite just the rock stars of our industry. 
uh, and I think it's great. And I, uh, as a person who's in charge of inviting people to the show, I know that I'll continue to do it because I'm just sure that every single person has a story to tell and a point yes. of view to share. And yes. even if someone else has said that, so it also applies to what you said about uh, some topics, some blog posts on the open mic being a bit repetitive. Um, I don't think that it's a pro that's really a problem because everyone has <laughs> my cat too is here. Yeah, everyone has a different perspective, and it takes sometimes it takes I don't know hundreds of posts for someone to read to finally start I don't know looking for better clients or for someone to understand what really uh, this or that problem, how it can, and what it is and how it can be solved. So I think that it's a, it's actually a good thing that uh, we give an opportunity to people who probably are not that visible to share their point of view because they are exactly as uh, meaningful and exactly as important as uh, I don't know someone else's points of view. Yeah. And uh, another thing I wanted to say, I don't know what it was anymore. If, I, if, <laughs> if it comes back, I'll say it because I'm getting a little bit distracted by Nancy's great idea. She said, yeah. she said that it might be interesting to invite some managers of those big translation agencies like line B line bridge in order to listen to also to what they say. I think it's a wonderful idea and I will probably do something like that. Uh, I don't know any managers of big agencies, of th those big agencies, but uh, I will figure it out somehow. I'll get in touch with them on LinkedIn or other platforms. I think it's going, I think it's going to be very interesting. I'm not sure if they would be interested in taking part in something like that. Mm, um, well, well, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, but I'll uh, try. I'll try. It's a great idea. It's, it's, it's worth a try. I also think that we probably. Yeah, that would be great, Nancy. Thank you. you you've got my email address. I know that <laughs> we yeah, exchanged a couple of emails. Yeah. Of emails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also think that it might be an interesting idea uh, to invite someone not from the translation industry. What do you guys think about that? Um, I think that I mean that we could invite uh, probably some people from yeah machine translation developers yeah that's that's interesting too but probably also someone uh from uh entrepreneurial uh part of the internet <laughs> someone who someone and clients i've been thinking about that too really thank you about yeah about about clients i was also thinking i thought about i thought of it uh, actually today when i was preparing some talking points for this lab i thought that it would be great to invite dmitry probably you could invite some uh, uh, you you have some contact with end clients someone from the gaming industry and probably some actually, other industries yes. uh, actually if, yes uh, uh my clients a few of my clients actually are watching this show wow <laughs> so, yeah. that's so, great <laughs> hi guys uh yeah and uh, i i actually showed them the show and uh, uh we had a we had an episode about uh, video game localization so yeah. this is why mm -hmm. I, I showed them uh, this uh, mm -hmm. episode because it was relevant to my industry yeah. where i work and uh, they were very interested they really liked the format and uh, i think i, I uh, I inv suggested them to be mm -hmm. a guest, to be a mm -hmm. guest at some point in the future, and they, mm -hmm. they would. I think they they didn't mind, so I just need to, I guess, reconnect them. And be, it, I think it would be a very interesting. Uh, yeah, very um, interesting. we can talk about uh, yeah. of their point of view of how they yeah, hire translators exactly. and how they work with translators and what difficulties they have because not everything is ideal, even. With me, I'm not ideal. So um, sometimes oh, there, are, there are so sometimes there are issues. <laughs> For example, we had we had a very uh, I had a client, uh, an end client, oh, and mm -hmm. there is always something comes up uh, with invoices, with my invoices. I I, I either forget to uh, mark them as paid, and then I mm -hmm. harass my client. Well, why haven't you paid my invoice? And they said, "Hey, we already paid. We already paid the invoice." And then I need to recheck my accounting software only to realize 
that mm-hmm. oh man, <laughs> I, I already received this invoice and I already received this payment. I just didn't mark, mark it as paid in my program, and my program keeps me uh, reminding me that the, the invoice is overdue. So those those little issues they uh, they they always uh, no no matter how how, how uh, diligent you are in your process, something would always come up, and yeah. some problems could, could always exist in a relationship between the translator and the client. So uh, if you were to invite our clients, I think that would be that would be a very interesting conversation to listen their part of this story, how they how they work with translators, uh, what uh, the, are the biggest issues uh, uh, from from their perspective, because uh, I think that could be a great idea. So I need to tap into my client base and figure yeah. out who you might be who, who might be you could do the same actually you could do the same actually and it, it, it uh, we can also invite uh, project managers we don't yeah, have to be... only focus on end clients i i don't have that many end clients who will be i was doing i things. was thinking about i was thinking about uh inviting alina from inbox translations mm-hmm. uh and uh, probably probably some other agency small agency owners agency owners or project mm-hmm. managers that mm-hmm. would be i think that would be interesting and uh, but what i was also thinking about is inviting someone some probably some freelancers uh who uh, do things like marketing or web design and things like that because i think it's always i it's always interesting to get some fresh perspectives uh, on how you could market your services, uh, probably some tips and tricks, because um, I read it um, somewhere that in order to, uh, people read a lot of um, articles and blogs about marketing, marketing uh, their services because they want to stand out, but when everyone reads the same and then does the same things, they don't stand out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a bit counterproductive. So probably we could invite someone who could uh, give some fresh perspective for translators <laughs> because yeah that might be interesting as well yeah we've talked about what's been working well for us what about what hasn't been working so well what Was hasn't been working so well like that the, the only, only thing that you, okay you go first okay. the, on, the only thing that doesn't work for us is the name of our show yeah <laughs> I've seen this too many times. I've seen this too many times. Uh, uh, for all the people who uh, are not so happy about the the name of our show, uh, we are well aware that blab means to talk about, about uh, secrets indiscreetly, and <laughs> we only use this name because of the name of the platform that we are using, and it is actually explained on our website and. In our introductory video that we post on on, on, on our homepage, but uh, I've seen too many comments. I don't want, I don't want to say too many comments, but I said I've seen a few comments and maybe other people who felt the same but didn't comment uh, that uh, blab is a very negative word. And when you hear uh, a name such as blab in translators, the first thing that comes into your mind that this uh, would be something about talking about dirty secrets of translation industry or, dra- or, dragging, or dra- dragging your clients through mud or something like that. And this is the exact opposite of what we are doing here. So, And when, we, when people see me promoting the show on Facebook or Twitter, uh, not everyone is... Uh, inclined to click those links and check the show out only because the name the name of the show is uh, is not as attractive as it could have been but the problem is we already have like 19 episodes so i think it's and and the website which has the same name so it's kind of hard for us to to back back up and i, I guess we just i guess we just have to push forward and i uh, actually don't think that it's a problem i i i want to tell a little story about how about how we cho- about the process of choosing the name you came up with that name and uh, i looked up the exact meaning of the word blab saw it and said that probably it has uh, some negative connotations what should we do mm-hmm. about that but firstly the problem is called blab and I think that the developers might well be aware of the negative connotations and they still chose this word. Yeah. Secondly, language is a very language. Any language is like a living being. 
new connotations are being uh, yeah, created every day or appear every day and disappear and go into non-existence and so on and so forth. Thirdly, we actually conducted a small uh, research before settling for this name. And uh, I asked um, my mother's husband, who is English and uh, who who is British and who, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think he, he's uh, uh, nearing 60, I think. And you asked also one of your... Um, yeah. Native in, native English speakers who live in Canada and probably are a bit younger than that, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I asked a couple of my friends. Yeah. And we got two opposing points of view. So my mom's husband said that it's a word with a very strong negative connotation and he wouldn't use that. And Dmitry's friend said, yeah, <laughs> that's actually fun. I think it might, it might be a good idea and it would work. So in, at the end, we decided to settle for that name. But probably I, I wasn't skeptical. I, wa I wasn't, okay, I wasn't very excited about that name. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but now I actually think that it's a good name because I think that no one can, you, you can't please everyone. And if someone doesn't want to go into trouble of clicking that link and checking out that website where, we, where the name is explained, then probably they are just not our target audience. And that's okay. And that, that doesn't make them <laughs> bad people or something like no, that. Or, or or anything anything doesn't mean anything negative about them, but I just think that it's yeah, it's not it's it's not we we can't uh, so our target audience can't be everyone, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, I think the problem is uh, with the name. We we forgot that we are dealing here with language geeks, and translators are language geeks. So uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people can get fixated on the meanings of the words and uh, uh, on the proper use of grammar, proper use of English, etc, etc. So, uh, but I also think that, uh, like you said, language is a, uh, is a, is a real being, it, it's, it always develops a new connotation, uh, have been, connotations have been added to uh, existing words every single day. For example, Twitter created a, a completely new connotation to the word yeah. tweet. Right, so uh, the the same the same thing is happening with the Blab as a platform. It, they they created a platform. Uh, I think they had a uh, quite a quite we, they did quite a research before they used this name, right? So right, like you said, they they're probably not stupid. They they wouldn't use something that people well will hate or will will have negative feeling about it. So I guess mm -hmm. it's just a matter. I guess it's just a matter of time uh, before people will. Uh, We'll be able to uh, to see the show for what it's it's really is, and we are, we are trying to basically we are trying to create a new meaning to the word blab. Now it's not negative; it's positive. It's it's about having fun little conversations, and like Rafa said in the comment, uh, maybe it's because of a, how I translate blab into Portuguese, but I see it as a cute name that simply means talk someone's ears off or talk through your elbows as we say it in Brazil. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> uh, we, we are trying to create a new meaning for the word blab. So we don't really mean, when you say blab in translators, we don't really mean it in its original meaning. So yeah, this, this, this is the only, the only problem we had. And maybe it's affected our growth. But like you said, uh, if people are not, are not willing to click on the link only because they're fixated on the name, maybe maybe we are better off without them. <laughs> and also, I think that uh, I heard it on uh, those non-translation podcasts that I listen to, but mm -hmm. actually the, yeah, I think you probably listen to them as well, uh, but actually it's not, uh, it's not the numbers that matter. Yeah, it doesn't, absolutely. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter how much subscribers we have on our list or how many people listen to 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 us today. Before we started, the, we started the recording. We actually didn't see anyone, any people watching us and listening to us. We still show up because I just, I really believe that we're doing something interesting and fun at the same time and something useful at that. And I think that, yeah. 
that's what matters and i know that people like our our blabs and people enjoy them and people share them and people get uh some useful insights from their colleagues uh i saw today katerina uh, mentioned that she found nikki's blog roll thanks to our blab and yeah it's 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 pretty cool because i know that i i personally uh picked up a lot lots and lots of useful info from our blab with katerina before my first translation conference this year and it's amazing i wouldn't i probably wouldn't have uh emailed her and asked her about some tips otherwise but i did that because uh we needed a guest for our talk so and it was really 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 useful for me and i'm sure it was also useful for other people so and i think that's what matters yeah. most yeah you are absolutely right now i i think i would show up consistently no matter how many viewers we have even we even if it's just the two of us it's still a great exercise to uh, you know to be able and to it's, and, it's actually, and it's actually fun <laughs> yeah, yeah and you, you you can exchange your opinion with people you can listen to the opinion of other people and it helps you form your own opinion and it helps you form your own views and it basically yeah. it really helps you develop as a professional at least as a, i i hope so i hope that uh, sure. Speaking about speaking about um, sh showing up, if even if there were only two of us, we had a couple of really really great conversations during our test calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which could which could easily be recorded and uploaded to YouTube and SoundCloud and iTunes, and they they were really really interesting. <laughs> yeah, but what people don't know on the show that uh, when we invite our guests, uh, we actually. Uh, conduct a uh, little test uh, before mm. the the actual blab. Uh, I get one week before the blab, just to make sure that everything works uh, on a platform that people are familiar with everything, that people can know how to connect and where to click, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And most of the time, we end up talking for at least a half an hour <laughs> <laughs> during our test calls, and because of from for for both of us, most of the time, this is the first time we are we are seeing the uh, our guests. So and i was curious uh, how how our guests would speak because I, I know many of our guests from uh, uh twitter and from from their blogs or from from the internet and mm -hmm. it's it's very i know it's very surreal when you when you finally can put uh all the words that the, that person yeah. had had written and to actually see how this person talks in real life and and how uh, I don't know how to explain, it, but it's, it's actually really fun and interesting. And sometimes, sometimes you wouldn't expect people to a, per, a person to be talking and have such a, a manner of talking. I don't know how to explain. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. you, you, Elena, had similar feelings about our guest, right? Not not to say that someone is uh, uh, talking in a weird or strange way, but. Uh, no, but it's, when, when, it's, yeah. when you read someone, when you read someone, and when you listen to someone, it, I think it's a very different experience, and it, it triggers different parts of your brain, right? It is, it is, and it's it's also uh, it's it's been very interesting because we it it also has something to do with what we were talking during our previous blab with Nikki, with something that Nikki mentioned that uh, people actually uh, people on the internet they don't uh, show everything oh, yeah. even if you have even if you have your picture there the picture might be a little bit outdated for example my picture is the picture from last year i haven't changed that much but my hair is longer so i probably look different and uh, i also picked my best picture <laughs> so <laughs> yeah I, pro I probably look a bit different uh, when i'm talking and i also look a bit different in I might look a little bit different in real life so, yeah, and uh, it, it is sometimes uh, interesting what we what picture we build in our minds when we are reading yeah. uh, a person <laughs> uh, a, a person's blog or something, and uh, what that person looks like in on the internet, on blab or in real life. Because I was happy to meet a couple of our guests in real life as well last year no this year last last spring it was yeah <laughs> okay 
and I also I also got uh, the I think it was the fourth thing that I wanted to say about it. It was about being professional. Uh, being professional for me personally, being professional and being fun. It's it's not something. It's not th these two things are not contradicting to each other. So I think that we can uh, have our cats show on our on on the lab, but still be professional and yeah. discuss important things. And I just I just think that people who think different, of course, it's it's okay to think different, and it's okay to uh, have another point of view and think that you can only be professional if you wear a tie and a suit. And yeah, it's it's okay. And it also largely depends on the industry, I would say, because if uh, we if we were targeting, I don't know. Um, lawyers working with patents with uh, our labs where we sit in uh, talk in a relaxed manner and sometimes a cat passes by yeah that probably wouldn't be a good idea and uh, I think they wouldn't watch this they wouldn't watch this yeah this yeah. is just this is just, this is, uh, some so, yeah you're absolutely right some some uh, industries some uh, people have a different code of ethics different codes of behavior so uh yeah and uh, people would expect a more i don't know they call it more professional approach or but but in reality it's just a just a different approach it's just a different approach yeah. and uh, i think that if my potential clients or at least clients that i am after would watch this lab I don't think they will would be scared of me. I don't think they, they 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 would look at this in disgust and say, "What the hell is this guy is doing?" Uh, <laughs> at least at least I hope so. But from from what I have seen, at least, like I said, a couple of my clients actually watched this uh, mm -hmm. uh, these conversations and they found them very interesting and uh, engaging. So even though we we try to keep things lighthearted uh, and have a more of a conversational flow to uh our, our show uh i think that uh, we're still quite pro we're doing quite, quite a good job uh, in terms of promoting our profession at least what, what i feel that uh, at least for at least for some probably for some uh segment. target audiences yeah for some segments because the translation is a very huge area and, uh, and a huge industry so it wouldn't be uh, we wouldn't be able to target everyone, even if we wanted that. And uh, another thing uh, which comes to my mind when we're talking about it is that it would probably be interesting to make a couple of episodes targeted at clients. So probably, um, I don't know, I'm just looking at Rafa's, <laughs> at Rafa's uh, avatar over there, and I think about probably about an episode for... Uh, writers who would like to get their books translated into different languages so it it might be interesting to look at that from that point of view as well so by the way uh, i see a couple of people among our viewers who haven't been on our show and you know that you can join uh, join us and be our guest you just have to go to blabbingtranslators.com and uh, click a red button that says I want to blab with you, I think. <laughs> it says that, okay, you won't miss it. It's a big yeah. red button. Yeah. This, is, this is what I'll, pro I'll probably will be doing. I think I'm going to create a, a separate page for uh, guests. A landing page yeah, for guests. Yeah, yeah, for guests, for people who would like to be on our show as guests. And I think I'm going to create a separate. I, uh, I, I, I thought about integrating Blab and Translators into the open mic in mm -hmm. a more meaningful way. What, what do you think mm -hmm. about it? For example, uh, uh, as you know, we publish all the recaps with all the uh, videos and uh, mm -hmm. audios uh, every single week, both on our blog on blabinterstaters.com, but also on the open mic because uh, the audience on the open mic is much, much bigger. We have uh, mm -hmm. around 10,000 people uh, reading the open mic every single month. So uh, I think that would make much more sense to add, I don't know, a quick link in the menu to our show or something like that. I don't know. What do you think? Um, you're asking me. Or I, our I'm asking you and I'm, <laughs> I'm asking our guests so if they don't mind. <laughs> well, actually, well both, actually, both projects, they, they, they all, uh, they all focus on translators. So it kind of makes, it kind of, I know 
initially I wanted it to be separate, but now that I think about it, that's uh, that's that's what I was going to say. <laughs> that actually from the very beginning, I just thought that it might be a great idea just to make it part of the open mic, but you wanted it to be separate, and uh, I don't have anything against it. The funny, it's it's just funny because. Yeah, that would be great, Nancy. That's a great idea. I think I think it's going to be. Please send me an email about that. <laughs> about uh, Nancy suggests that uh, we get some translation students online for a show. I think it's it would be very interesting because talking to younger translators and to students that would be very interesting for everyone because yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could do that too. <laughs> okay, so I think we have August plan now. <laughs> yeah, invite more interesting people from our industry, invite interesting people from other industries, clients, project managers. Yeah, yeah, I think but this we, could be very. I, I, think, I think we, I think we already have a couple, a couple of uh, real guests that 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 I can put on our Trello board. <laughs> yeah. And so um, I said I, I was talking about uh, integrating Bible translators and the open mic and uh, sharing the show the show there. We should probably discuss it in more detail. The funny thing is that uh, in spite of the fact that we have a separate website and technically these two projects are two separate projects, people still think that Bible translators and the open mic is uh, basically one project, and I'm just helping you out with this small part of it. So. I don't think it would make much difference, and uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea. It might be a good yeah, idea because, to talk about it. Because uh, I, or, I already use uh, the open mic to promote Blood and Translators anyway yeah. by by posting yeah. uh, recaps on uh, on the open mic, and I also we also have a mailing list on the open mic uh, with uh, about a thousand uh, subscribers, and I, mm -hmm. I have a small section at the top of every email promoting each and every episode, so. This also helps, and I think that 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 it will make much more sense if we add links in the menu or something like that. Uh, I only didn't integrate it uh, into the open mic from the very beginning because uh, the open mic was and still is in development. For example, I recently added a much better menu. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you guys seen it. Uh, I think now it's more more comprehensive and it's more, it's much easier to navigate the website. So I was thinking about adding uh, a separate menu item for different community uh, community features, for example, uh, links to yeah. uh, a social wall or links to the blog, blabbing and translators, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I also think maybe in the future we'll build a forum or Q and A, a section or something like that. So adding a, a project that is targeted at translators and is basically done by translators and for translators into another project that was created for translators and by translators, which the open mic, uh, I think that that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, we could, we, we could discuss that. Yeah. All right. So yeah, it's almost one hour <laughs> of just the two of us <laughs> talking. Are you guys sick of us yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have you have a chance to get a little rest for the for the next. I think it's going to be a month and a half, right? <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Nikki. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I, I personally, I really enjoyed the the experience, even though it's always a big stress. It's always stressful, and our guests say they 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 always uh, nervous, and we 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 we. we, we we have to act very cool that like, don't worry about that everything's going to be fine <laughs> but the, the the thing is we are also nervous and uh, we're also doing something that haven't been done before like uh, the live talk show where, where there is no cuts then you cannot stop yeah. and you have to come up with the topics for the conversations or questions on the fly so it's a very stressful experience uh, but it's nevertheless it's very enjoyable thanks to our amazing audience and people who are tuning in every single week which uh, never stops to amaze me that people actually watch this live so thank you to all of the people who are watching this right now and to all the people who are watching this in the recording as well uh, it's okay that you 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 cannot make it to a live show all of us are busy people and uh, all of us 
who are work with clients and who are married to this profession know how much how, how, how well the our time is so that's why we upload everything for you guys to all the other resources and thank you so much for watching on other resources and for sharing as well uh, i hope that uh, we will keep on growing we will keep on uh, meeting and interviewing and talking to very interesting awesome people from both from our profession and from the outside world so to speak <laughs> and uh i guess uh, that's it for the day <laughs> you they want to add something i want to answer nikki's question <laughs> about uh, whether we have watched any episodes i did watch my first episode i think i watched it from the start to the to the end from the beginning to end because I was just so curious how, how it would look. <laughs> and I also listened to some of the episodes. Yeah, I, I also watch a couple of episodes and I also listen. But mostly when I upload them, I, I, I have to skip through and see that everything is, is, is looking normal and we don't have anything that would uh, look uh, strange when we upload to all, the, all those channels. But yeah, I'm I'm very excited about season two, and uh, thank you so much for all the suggestions that we had today about yeah. like, inviting project managers, inviting clients. Uh, if you guys have any questions about our show or want to just uh, say something, or maybe if you want to be our guest for season two, you can always send us an email. You know how to find us on Twitter or on on our website or anywhere we we are, we are basically everywhere <laughs> and you can also use the open mic a new cool mm -hmm. social platform for translators <laughs> uh, yeah so i just want to thank everyone all of our guests i see some of them here uh, thank you guys because without you we, we couldn't have done it we couldn't have done 19 episodes of talking <laughs> just <laughs> just between the two of us and uh yeah, I hope I hope that some of you will come back to our show as guests in the next seasons, and that those of you who haven't been our guest yet will also join us because it's a lot of fun. It's going out of your comfort zone, but for me, I think it's it's been yeah a little bit over a year that my motto is going out of your comfort zone is good, and I'm repeating that quite often, but it really is that way. Yes, so absolutely. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you had a lot of fun. Uh, thank you so much for interacting, for asking questions, and for being such a loyal fans of our show. show. We, we, we are doing this because of you, and we are doing it because we love our profession, and we want to bring a little bit of fun and value to the people of, uh, of translation uh, industry. So uh, we'll see you all in August. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Have a great summer. Yeah, Bye. Have a wonderful summer. <laughs>